How's everyone? Cheating Lefty here, and I am out at the field to take a look at Discraft's Ringer GT. Now, I've got to be quick because I actually do not know how long this weather is going to hold. Let's go ahead and take a look at the Ringer GT. So it's a speed four, glide four, turn zero, fade three, and a stability rating of a 1.7, making this a really nice, predictable, overstable putter. Now it does stand in at a height of about 1.7 centimeters, and for the disc diameter is about 21.1 centimeters. So being a GT, this does have a thumb track. Now I know a lot of people don't like thumb tracks, but you know what, it's hardly noticeable. I actually almost didn't even notice it when I first picked it up. And also for you people who like beaded putters, there is a nice small bead on the Ringer GT. So now let's go out to the field and actually watch me throw this disc. Now for these uh, shots heading in this direction, this is actually into a 25 mile per hour headwind. You can see the disc, it almost like it wanted to start to flip and then it flattened out and then stalled in that wind and hysered. But even still, going into this headwind, it never once wanted to Anheuser out. It didn't want to fully turn over. Even when throwing it, trying to over crank it on an Anheuser line, you can see it starts, flips up to flat, holds, has that nice fade. With throwing the Ringer GT, I am throwing it in two different plastics, as you can tell. I'm throwing it in the ZFLX plastic, which I think has a tick more over stability than uh, the Jawbreaker that I'm throwing here. You can see when thrown on trying to force it over, they both flip up to flat, hold straight, and hyzer out. But I do think the Jawbreaker gets a little bit more turn on it uh, than the ZFLX. I really enjoy throwing putters that you can really work a lot of different lines with, especially in the Jawbreaker plastic, where it's just a tick less stable than the ZFLX. You can really get nice flex shots with it, like here. Just really get some air under it, let the thing flex back. Absolutely perfect for those shots. You can throw the discs uh, flat, hard, and low and just let it carry dead straight and then get a nice, predictable, gentle fade at the end. Or if you wanted to, you can even toss it up into the air, um, maybe on a slight hyzer, and get more of what you're accustomed to, say, with a zone. So I do think that this disc, it doesn't have as hard of a dump as a zone does, but you can really throw it nice, hard, flat. It never is going to risk turning over. In fact, I'm throwing... Uh, most of the backhand shots with this disc at near 100% power, and they're not even considering flipping over. So I'm comparing it quickly to the zone. This is a jawbreaker zone. Look how far wide to the left I have to hang the zone out just to make sure it's not going to skip past the basket because of how hard it dumps. Then for the uh, Ringer GT, it still has it over stability, but I can take a more direct approach to the basket. However, where I really like this disc is right here. These types of shots where even in a headwind, you can toss it out nice and soft or toss it nice and hard and just know it's not going to turn over even in strong headwinds and it's going to end up right next to the basket. This was a 25 mile per hour headwind here. And again, perfect. You can use this disc also for touch forehand shots. It's going to more or less stay almost right where it is. When it lands, it rolled a few feet there. The Jawbreaker, being not as um, overstable as the ZFLX, holds a nice straighter line. Oh, and by the way, being an overstable putter, headwind putts, not an issue whatsoever. So I enjoy throwing the Ringer GT so much, I decided to tackle one of the longest holes on the course with it. So first shot, you can see how nice and straight the Jawbreaker uh, is, but it still has that nice hyzer finish. Then again, a nice, just soft, overstable approach. And then coming back into a headwind, a very wobbly but easy three. It's very rare for me to know that the first day throwing a disc, it's going to be in my bag. I can definitely say the Ringer GT is just that. Just after a few throws with it, I knew it's exactly what I was looking for. In fact, I think it actually fills a void in my bag that I've had for a couple of years now. Regardless if you're an amateur or a pro, I think players of all skill levels and arm speeds are going to be able to make tremendous use of this disc. If you haven't checked it out yet, do yourself a favor, grab the Ringer GT. You can thank me later. 
And I actually have to give a big thank you to Team Discraft member Alex Geisinger for making the existence of this disc known to me. Thank you all for watching this video, and also be sure to hit that like and subscribe button, and a big thank you to Josh and Brad over at uh, Riverside Pro Shop for their continued support.